That was our last day in Porto. For Michel had decided it was time we saw something of the country inland. He had an uncle and aunt who lived about 30 miles away in a remote village called Kidatsu. In that part of the world, so late in the season, there were no buses, so there was nothing else for it but to walk, or rather hitchhike, we hoped. We walked for miles without seeing a single car, and I was nearly all in when the most remarkable old vehicle rounded the corner. Thank heavens it stopped. To our surprise, the driver was none other than the fat man of the bus. He was delighted to see us. Yes, he was going to Kidatsu, so in we got, thinking that our transport problem had been solved. We laughed on the other side of our faces when the fat man's truck gave up the ghost. We didn't want to leave him in the lurch, but we couldn't help, and we had to get on. However, by now, we were in a village where Michel was known. And as everyone seems to be related to everyone else in Corsica, we had no difficulty in borrowing a couple of donkeys. I had ridden a donkey was on the beach at the age of five, so I found the Corsican species a good deal too lively for my liking, but after a bit I got used to it and even enjoyed it. Just after midday we arrived at our destination, a tiny stone hut in the middle of a wild valley. This wasn't his uncle's home, Michel explained, but a place called a séchoir, to which the family came in the autumn to gather and dry chestnuts. Michel was given a wonderful reception by his aunt and his cousin, and they seemed genuinely pleased to meet me. Michel's uncle was a splendid-looking old man, tall and dignified, and with a grave courtesy which is characteristic of the true Corsican. I was impressed and touched by a charming ceremony which is always observed in the country districts when strangers arrive. Michel's aunt brought us wine and glasses, while his uncle, having first of all made the sign of the cross, gave each of us a piece of bread and a glass of wine. Another member of the family arrived. He was Michel's cousin, Pierre, a great hunter. That rabbit solved the problem of what to give the unexpected guests. While Michel's aunt cooked lunch, we wandered off to be alone. This was to be our last day together after all. Nothing could be more informal or pleasant than a Corsican meal. Relatives and neighbours kept dropping in, so that by the time we reached the coffee stage, the party had doubled itself, and some of the men were singing drowsily. When the time came for us to go, there was yet another little ceremony. Michel's aunt gave me the traditional parting gift of a goat's milk cheese. I 
I was sorry to leave those friendly, hospitable people. But my holiday was drawing to a close, and I had to be in Ajaccio that night. Michel came back with me so that we could spend the remainder of our last evening together. My ship sailed at midnight, so we had a few hours left for a farewell drink and our first and last dance. We didn't want to talk, even though we knew that in so short a time we would be saying goodbye. to go. Out we went into the cool night air, into the silent streets. And those nets that had led me into Corsica led me out again. Yes, Michelle, I'll write to you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Kidatsu, Porto, and Ajaccio. Goodbye, Corsica, the red rocks and the blue sea. Goodbye, Michelle. I'll never forget you. Oh, my God. 